first form of media is a Glamour Magazine ad. So this is a one-page ad, right? Um, sorry, one-page ad in Glamour Magazine. Their circulation is about 2.3 million, right? Now, obviously, that sees a few extra people, because if it's sitting on the table, somebody might pick it up and look at it, whatever. Um, but it is an ad. There's a lot of ads, right? And so, you know, and if you think about how you kind of scroll through a magazine, you don't necessarily see all of them, right? So this is kind of one form of media, right? So the second form of media is a YouTube video, right? So you've probably heard this one before. But this is a YouTube video. It's from a girl named, um, God, why can't I think of her name? Bethany Moda. Um, it was, so it's about a company, Nix Cosmetics, right? So in this video, she goes on to kind of talk about how she's doing backflips because NYX is now carried in Target. She goes on to rave about two of their different products. It is earned media, meaning you know they, it is kind of authentic. There's no advertising kind of to it, right? And it got about 1.9 million views as compared to like 2.3 million. And we know that people kind of saw it, right? And they opted in, so they chose to see it. Now obviously there's gonna be some repeats. A couple people have seen it, right? Um, but that's kind of the second form of media. And it's interactive, they get to see it used, all those kinds of things, right? But the reason I show that and the reason I talk about that is when you talk about price tags surrounding these options, so Glamour Magazine as a price, right? The price tag on a one-page ad is about a quarter million dollars. Now, obviously the print industry is hurting, so you're gonna pay about 100K, right? Um, kind of with a hint, hint, nudge, nudge, editorial coverage. It might be even a little bit less than that, right? Um, but it is paid media. We don't really know, kind of, it's probably not going to convince somebody to buy something, right? Versus this is somebody giving kind of an authentic, organic recommendation. Um, they actually didn't pay a dollar to have it created, right? And the reason I show that video is that's the video that Nick's used during their investment presentations to L'Oreal and to kind of the other investment firms. And when they showed it to L'Oreal, L'Oreal went, oh my God, you know, how much did you pay her? And they said, First of all, we didn't pay her. Second of all, we didn't even know she was going to do it. Third of all, it got close to two million different kind of people engaging with that content, right? Now, the reason that that's important, the reason I show that kind of dichotomy is what's happening in the beauty industry in the last basically two years. And the reason this is important is because Nix got acquired about a year ago, a little under a year ago, for $500 million at the highest revenue multiple in the industry in the last 60 plus years, right? So they were doing about $90 million in revenue at the time and got acquired for $490 million, right? And we're and the reason that they got acquired, or part of the reason that they got acquired, was because they were spending so little on marketing dollars, right? They had never bought a print ad, never bought a TV ad, never paid someone to create content, but they worked with about 700 different people like Bethany Moda, primarily through the use of product in order to get increased exposure. So I would say that's why kind of a lot of people have started paying attention to this form of media and have really started investing in kind of these options, right? Now, the reason that this is happening, or kind of the, the why behind this, is what we call the democratization of influence. So what that means is the amount of people creating content has grown exponentially in the last kind of 10 years or so. So to put some benchmarks and some numbers on that, in 2005, there were about 7 million kind of active blogs, meaning people publishing content once a month or more, right? That's about 7 million in 2005. Between 2005 and 2010, it went from about 7 million to about 225 million, right? And then from 2010 to 2013, so in three years, it went from 225 million to about 1.4 billion, right? Now, just to be clear about what I'm talking about there, that's not to say that there are 1.4 billion Bethany Motos out there, right? But what that's saying is Bethany Moda could have a Facebook and a YouTube and a Pinterest and an Instagram and a Vine and a blog, et cetera, right? So there's all individual profiles. Um, but that's kind of, I would say, kind of what we're talking about. And I think generally what's happened within social media is people try to say, okay, I'm gonna look at Bethany Moda's video and figure out how many dollars got driven from that video to my kind of e-commerce site, to my website. But the reality is that that's not the way that people purchase products, right? The likelihood that somebody watches that video and then immediately goes to nixcosmetics.com and buys that product is really, really low, right? But the likelihood that they go to an Ulta and they kind of look at, they're comparing a few different products and they're looking at NYX Cosmetics versus kind of say it's like Maybelline or some other product. And they go, oh yeah, I remember kind of watching somebody that I trust 
saying that NYX Cosmetics was an awesome brand and that I should really try out their products, that can change their purchase decision in store.